Hey, Frog Prince Rana here, and thank you for dropping by. A lot of the time, the whole point an anti-vaxxer will make hinges on one starting assumption, and that is related to graphene oxide. Now, I have several videos in pipeline where this is a recurring theme, so I thought it might be more efficient to go through the facts, including what is, how it relates to COVID vaccine, and how this whole thing came into being. So first, what is graphene oxide? Well, it is a single layer sheet of graphite oxide, a compound that contains carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. It is used in many applications, from sensors to textiles to the potential application of medicine. This material is cheap, readily available, and can disperse in water. It is water soluble, so it may be a great solution for helping medications be absorbed. It can be produced as a powder or a solution for various uses. Graphite oxide was first prepared by Oxford chemist Benjamin C. Brody in 1859. By treating graphite with a mixture of potassium chlorate and fuming nitric acid. In 1957, Hammers and Hoffman developed a safer, quicker, and a more efficient process called Hammers method, which is still widely used, often with some modifications. Graphene oxide may be a useful tool in vaccine delivery in the future because scientists and chemical engineers believe it can be engineered to be a safe delivery vehicle for vaccines and help increase their effectiveness. While certain amount of graphene oxide could be toxic to humans, current research on the use of this compound in other vaccines indicate that the amount that would be in a potential vaccine would be so small that it would not be toxic to human cells. A 2016 study showed that graphene-based materials like graphene oxide might cause dose-dependent toxicity, decreased cell viability, formation of lung granuloma, and cell apoptosis. Notably, these studies were performed on mice, but graphene oxide specifically showed no obvious toxicity at low doses or mild doses from 0.1 to 0.25 mg. It was chronically toxic at higher doses of 0.4 mg, where it was found to deposit in the lungs, liver, spleen, and kidneys. It is important to note that this 0.4 mg of graphene oxide is proportionally much greater in mice than it would be in humans, considering their size and biological differences. Further, this study was completed a while ago, and the graphene oxide was not chemically engineered in a manner that may make it safer or more tolerable for living organisms. That brings us to the next term, lipid nanoparticles. These are basically tiny balls of fat, are used in mRNA vaccines to protect delicate RNA molecules so the vaccine can enter the human body without being destroyed. Lipid nanoparticles have been recognized as potential drug delivery systems since the 1960s. Lipids are fatty, oily, or waxy, and include fats and oils, waxes, and steroids, among other things. Sometimes, a compound called polyethyl glycol, PEG, can be used to help keep lipid nanoparticles stable, as they are used in the COVID-19 mRNA vaccine. Now to the actual COVID vaccines. To make sure people know what they are getting, the US Food and Drug Administration FDA has posted an ingredient list for the Pfizer Biotech COVID-19 vaccine on its website. So has the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, not to mention individual manufacturers. To reiterate, no WHO authorized vaccine produced by Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca, CanSinco, Sinovac, Sputnik V, or Janssen contains graphene oxide. The Novavax COVID-19 vaccine has not yet published a list of its ingredients 
in a peer-reviewed or open access publication. There are six links in description containing vaccine ingredients list. Pfizer also confirmed to Reuters that its vaccine do not contain the material. This material is also not listed in any of the widely available COVID-19 vaccines worldwide. Maybe we should also point out that many third parties also did their own test and confirmed the same fact. Dr. Stephen Griffin, a virologist at Leeds University, told full fact that lipid nanoparticles used in the mRNA COVID-19 vaccines are different and behave differently to metal or carbon nanoparticles. He explained that the lipid nanoparticles in the vaccines are specifically designed to interact and fuse with the membranes of the cell within the muscles into which they are injected. As such, the vast majority of the material is absorbed at the injection site. Graphene oxide is currently being investigated to determine whether or not it can be a safe and effective tool for use in vaccines, among other biomedical properties. So why are all the anti-vaxxers keep raising the same talking point? Well, these allegations are based on an analysis by a professor, Dr. Pablo Campra Madrid in Spain, which has been rejected by experts. He obtained what he himself described as non-conclusive results after studying one vial. From this, many articles started popping up. Now this notice is for YouTube. What I am about to narrate and show is completely false and after reading part of the article, I will talk about its validity. Researchers from Spain have discovered that the Pfizer Biotech Wuhan coronavirus COVID-19 vaccine contains graphene oxide. The research team from the University of Almera's Department of Engineering recently published a report titled Graphene Oxide Detection in Aqueous Suspension Observational Study in Optical and Electron Microscopy. In this study, the Spanish researchers found that each dose of the Pfizer vaccine they examined contained around 747 nanograms of graphene oxide. This means that more than 99% of the Pfizer vaccine was made up entirely of graphene. The revelation regarding the Spanish report and the graphene oxide in the Pfizer vaccine first came to light after it was reported by conservative commentator Stu Peters on his show. The Stu Peters Show. Peters brought medical expert and 20-year pharmaceutical researcher Dr. Jane Ruby onto the July 8th episode of his show to talk about what graphene oxide is and its effect on the human body. During his show, Peters asked Ruby if graphene oxide is poisonous. She responded by saying, it is most definitely a poison. Ruby then went on to explain some of the ways Graphene oxide is dangerous to people. Peters agreed with Ruby's conclusion. He added his concern regarding why the discovery of graphene oxide in the vaccines is not being reported more widely by mainstream media outlets. His only conclusion is that these corporations must be involved. They're in on it. They want you dead. They're part of the murder plot, he said. The report in question link is in the description, dated June 28, 2021, was published by Pedro Campra Madrid, a professor of the University of Almera. The author states in the report that the study was not made on behalf of the university. In a Twitter post, the University of Almera described the publication as an unofficial report by a university professor about an analysis of a sample of unknown origin with a total lack of traceability. It added that it was a report that the university neither subscribes to nor shares as the report itself warns. As stated on page 3 and page 8 of his report, Kempra analyzed samples of the Pfizer vial of unknown origin with two types of microscopes. The vial was sent to him by messenger service. The paper does not provide further details, 
regarding the vaccine doses source. In his report, Kampra said he compared images of this vaccine liquid under the microscopes with images of graphene oxide published in scientific journals. He concluded that they looked similar. Experts consulted by Spanish fact checker Maldita.es said images could show any material. In his study, Campra Madrid himself acknowledges that the microscope doesn't provide conclusive evidence and that the analysis comes from a single limited sample, one of unknown origin and traceability. Campra Madrid also says the investigation was requested by Ricardo Delgado Martin, founder of the blog Le Cuenta Columna. According to articles by Spanish fact checker, Maldita ES and outlet La Vanguardia, Delgado had previously spread misinformation about COVID-19. Matthew Diasco, an American Chemical Society Congressional Science and Engineering Fellow, took to Twitter to criticize Campra Madre's report. Among other arguments, Diasco said that liquids containing graphene or graphene oxide in any significant amount tend to be dark brown or black. If the shots had even 1% graphene or graphene oxide, while the claim states it has 99.9%, the liquid would look black or at least dark. The Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine is a transparent or yellowish liquid, as are other available COVID-19 shots in the US, Moderna, Janssen, and AstraZeneca. Keep in mind that vaccines are a lot more highly regulated than things like dietary supplements and various foods and beverages. Imagine what would happen if Pfizer were not to include a key ingredient, especially one that comprises 99% of the vaccine, on the ingredient list submitted to the FDA and CDC. Such an omission could put Pfizer at major legal risk and jeopardize their entire business. The FDA also conducts periodic evolution of the manufacturing processes involved in producing the vaccines. To put it in perspective, suppose I send a vial to a reputable lab and they find, say, cyanide in that vial. Now, what is wrong with this approach? Well, first of all, it can be a bad actor, i.e. Me putting the cyanide myself in the vial before sending it over. It can be incorrect diagnosis or contamination in the lab itself. This is why we have peer review, meaning other people around the world doing the same test and getting the same result. What we have here so far is utter BS. Finally, let's talk about Dr. Jane Ruby. All the articles call her a 20-year pharmaceutical researcher. In reality, Dr. Ruby has a doctorate in psychology, not medicine. Her website has the following description. Dr. Jane Ruby is a Washington, D.C. health economist and new right political pundit with fascinating conservative insights and breaking news in the world of new media. Basically, the articles tried to lend more credence to Dr. Ruby by adding that pharmaceutical researcher to describe her. Well, that's all for today. If you think it's a worthwhile video and to ensure YouTube suggests it, please leave a like and even share it around. If you want to be super awesome, please consider subscribing so you can be updated with my new contents. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated and helpful for growth of my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Wherever you are, have a safe day. Signing off.